Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here's your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning and welcome or welcome back to Faith in Our Hometown. Maybe this is your first time joining us or maybe you're a regular viewer, but we're happy that you're with us on a Sunday morning uh, for our show that we talk about issues of faith and how they affect us as people of the greater Joplin area. Uh, trying to figure out how we can work together to kind of support each other in all of the different efforts that we do on behalf of the community and on behalf of our own individual churches and faith groups. Uh, this morning my guest is going to be Mike Schrage, uh, who is uh, the um, Executive Director for Good News Productions International. Good News Productions International is one of those signs that for years I drove past and I'd see it off to the side of the road. It's kind of like on, you know, heading out of town north on Main Street, uh, you know, toward uh, Stone's Corner and off to the side, right past the Zora, exit, you know, uh, Zora overpass or whatever, mm -hmm. there's that little sign. And so we're going to be talking about Good News uh, Productions International right after we come back after this Mercy Minute. So stick around and join us this morning. Once I quit playing football, I still kept up with the eating, uh, the amount of calories I was, um, wasn't exercising, so the weight started adding on. Dr. Lou is very knowledgeable in um, the work he does. He also has a program set up that has support systems in place for you. You know, you, you'll go through the seminar at first, um, he'll give you the different examples of uh, surgeries you can have uh, to see which one works best with you. He will also sit down with you and discuss the options, um, what he feels, but he'll work with you the entire time. Mercy has their gastric uh, bypass program here. Um, they have all kinds of resources and support systems in place. Um, they want to see you succeed, and they're here to help you the entire time, even after the surgery. So welcome back again for Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning is Mike Schrage, who is the Executive Director of Good News Productions International. Like I said, when I would drive past that, I would guess it was something Christian because of Good News, okay, right. and the logo and those kinds of things. But Mike, first tell us a little bit about yourself and then tell us what goes on out there. I'd be glad to. Thanks for having us, uh, by the way. My pleasure. Uh, well, myself, I was uh, born on the farm, uh, oldest of nine kids in Illinois, and uh, got a degree in animal physiology. Wanted to be a veterinarian originally. Oh, there you Things go. Things kind of changed. Then <laughs> had a heart and passion to help uh, international people, people that weren't doing as well as myself. And I thought, well, maybe I'll join the Peace Corps, you know, originally. And then later on, decided, no, uh, my faith journey with Jesus got stronger and stronger. Uh, I went to Ozark Christian College right here okay. in town. Right, yeah. And from there, married my lovely wife, Carolyn Shroggy, who helps over their life choices. And then we went to the country of Kenya as missionaries for 20 years. Oh, I didn't know you guys were there for 20 years. Yes. I knew you were down there, but I didn't know it was for 20 years. Yes, all our kids were born there, okay. everything. We had three lovely children, all born there. And so uh, my wife, Carolyn, has a degree in nursing and worked on the medical community health side of things. Right. My degree and experience in agriculture and farming. And then we were doing uh, gospel presentations and helping them plant churches. Mm -hmm. and so there was community lift as well as spiritual lift. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, what goes on out of Good News uh, Productions International? I mean, you know, I see the little world and yeah. does, does its thing. So right. what do you do out there? Well, we do, basically what we try to do is say this, is that we make videos or any kind of media that is twofold. It's biblically solid, follows the Bible, and secondly, it's culturally relevant. And by that, what we're meaning is that whatever audience we're targeting, that audience, we will use that audience actors, that audience's language, their worldview perspectives, uh, their settings, so that it really looks and feels like if we're in Africa, there would be African presenters and it would be in African languages. So it really looks and feels like it's African. It's not been imported. It's not, as they say, Western right. in that regard. So what we do in our office, we're about 20 staff there, just north of the Bible wow. College there in North Maine, uh, is we're kind of the bridge uh, we have 17 different studio production sites around the world. 
people really don't know, but uh, we're really kind of just the tip of the iceberg here yeah, in Joplin. Interesting. And so our 20 staff are kind of the bridge between uh, about 80 staff that are non-American in these 17 studios. And then we have about 250 churches and about another 600 individual families or donors for a composite of 800 around the U.S. that support the budgetary needs of these 80 people as they do media production, which isn't an inexpensive endeavor, actually. No, it's. Yeah. Uh, I'm always amazed at how much you know it takes to make something look good. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, we why. chew up media and go through the minutes and have no idea. Oh, that took a whole week to do that one minute. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was. Uh, I was very impressed. Uh, you know, when I. Uh, uh, went to the Life Choices Banquet last year and saw the production. That's when I first found out what you all did because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, you know, and Karen said, yeah, yeah, Mike's company did that. I'm like, really? And I was <laughs> like, well, okay. And, uh, you know, and so that was when I started to found, find out about Good, Good News Productions mm -hmm. International. So I was like, uh, I was very impressed with the piece. Um, it was very, um, I mean, speaking of, of having it speak to, you know, uh, its current market and a current language, I mean, it was just like very fast, very uh, frenetic, uh, which was definitely a millennial piece, mm -hmm. you know, for, for that age range. And, you know, and just like images just bombarding you back and forth. And I was thinking, yeah, you figured out how to speak to that <laughs> generation. You know, I mean, you know, you know, it made me a little dizzy, but with my, you know, my, I've got a little, I got a little ADD going, so it kind of worked for me. But you know, that's what that was, that what it would mm -hmm. take. But I was, but I was very impressed. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and do you let? I mean, so you, you do this in all these different places with their own people and their own language and things like that. Right. Do you let the, uh, do you let the, um, the flow of the content also be determined by? those folks as long as it fits those criteria that you were talking about? That's the key. Uh, we believe that nationals know best. So again, in Kenya, where we lived and worked, we started one of those 17 uh, production sites. And uh, they, the Kenyan people, know the issues. Right. They know their communities. Um, and so they do a lot of their own uh, ideation and everything themselves. Um, what a sociologist uh, years ago I found fascinating told uh, di kind of studies us and dissects us as human beings is <laughs> that we are different in 73 different ways. Uh, there's 73 different ways that I'm different than an African. Uh, and it's not just my skin tone, it's not just the language, it's my sense of humor, right. uh, naming pr procedures, uh, all kinds of things. And so we cannot just think that, well, if we're just going to translate something into their language, that does it well enough. Oh, no. I mean, you know, if we've ever gotten something that was at Christmas time, an instructional piece, and it tells you how to do this, and you use the word woman's instead of women, we immediately know, oh, somebody tried to translate that and slipped up a little bit. And immediately we justify kind of saying that was probably not as good a piece or we question the audacity, sure. the authenticity of that thing. Well, it's so. just a distancing factor. I mean, it gets yeah. in between you and the message you were trying right. to deliver in the first place. That's right. And I'll, I'll do that sometimes. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll do that sometimes when I read other Christians' literature and things like that because it, it's tone, it's a little tone deaf to me in the way that I'll, I'll approach my, our spin to Christianity mm -hmm. and Catholicism. Because mm -hmm. we, you know, it's got its own little flavor, as does Baptist, as does, you know, a Pentecostal. I mean, they're all different mm -hmm. flavors of what might be the same, you know, uh, same guy, same message, mm -hmm. but certainly different flavors are doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. And, and it's, it, you know, if you're really trying to hone that in, you're trying to make sure that you're speaking to people and you don't get in the way of the message. Right. And, and, and that's much more easily done by the locals. Right, right. Yeah. They, um, you know, we do things, everything from uh, things that would be agricultural based and health based. Of course, a lot of it will be Jesus, you know, gospel church based. Um, but they, again, they know the audience. And so when we're like in, uh, again in Kenya, we did a huge whole movie uh, that was about the uh, sanctity of life issue mm. that was launched and endorsed by several high up in, in the government. And actually, uh, it's not legalized to have abortion yet today in Kenya as a result of that. Uh, in India, there was a lot of uh, drama years ago between um, 
the Hindu and the Muslim uh, communities. Right. Still, so is. We yes. Still is. Yeah. And we did a, several pieces that said, you know, can we get beyond that and really look at just being peace givers and helping people in communities, things like we focused on doing uh, well eye clinics and things of that nature, something that we could all rally around right. I mean, you know, for the benefit of the community. Yeah, just regardless of what direction we're going to come from, is there anybody out here in our hometown that would be against health care? I right. mean, you know, right. is there anybody that'd be against taking care of kids, anything against education? I mean, right. you know, we got to find those things that unite us, mm. which I think is really important. We recently had some of the newer uh, production teams uh, down in uh, Nicaragua, and uh, some of the deals and <coughs> topics they're dealing with are things like um, sex trafficking issues are yeah. there, just as bad as they're in other places in the world. Um, girls dealing with bulimia and uh, eating disorder issues interesting uh, were being highlighted but again and then also making scriptures available for people that uh, were deaf but in their own local language and so wow. again uh, it's a real real uh, opportunity to make it very customized as we say culturally relevant for their audience so how do you I mean how did you get there how did you just suddenly decide that, that this is what you wanted to do this is I mean this is this is great I mean I'm communications guys so <laughs> I love this kind of thing so how did you just how'd you get there well it's got a long story but um, the gentleman who started Good News Productions International actually my father-in-law and okay. so he was a student at Ozark Christian College right here in town he went to neighboring Zimbabwe, not Kenya where I was with Carolyn and our family, but neighboring Zimbabwe years ago. And he noticed that when he was taking his first media pieces, film strips way back when, film from strips. the US. Wow. Yeah, okay, we're yeah, really we're going gonna, back to the archives. We are going now. back, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were American based, and so they just, they were going, why do Americans drive on the wrong side of the road? And why are men so rude to their wives? And you're going, rude to their wives? What do, you, what do you mean by that? And here was a real good cultural cue, is because in our chivalrousness here, we get the door and let ladies go first, you know, into the car, into the church building, into the home, etc. Well, for Africa, men always go first, because if you're walking on a path, there could be a snake. There could be something that's poisonous. There could be, if you go into the home, there could have been a perpetrator lurking around the corner. So you always go first, and that shows your love, is that you're putting your life on the line. Mm -hmm. Well, they're seeing that men are putting uh, themselves as being weaselly and being weak and being scary cat. Well, those because things are they usually put the wind. true, but <laughs> that not for the reasons that yeah. you're pointing out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he saw that and put up the film strips and said, ah, oh, they're getting off message, you know. Well. When we were talking and uh, he was discussing with his African colleagues, I said, well, you saw the media drew people, but it was the wrong kind of media. Why don't we just make our own? And so that was the idea of Good News Productions International, starting from uh, an American missionary, my father-in-law, Zaid Nutt, and an African, a Zimbabwean, by the name of Michael Nyanduro. And the two of them then brought the expertise of media along with nationals and combined it together to be culturally relevant and biblically based. And that started, and it started to explode sure. in all kinds of ways and all kinds of other missions said, hey, could you do this for us? Could you help us? And so when they had to come back home off the field uh, in 1975, because of some medical reasons for one of the children, um, they said, well, that was a good run. You know, it was in Africa and it's going to stay in Africa. And people said, no, 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 no. This has applications globally. Sure. And that's when instead of it becoming Good News Productions Zimbabwe or Rhodesia back then, it became Good News Productions International. And so some years later, I was, as I said, a missionary. We saw firsthand how GMPI materials helped our work be more effective. And so when we came back off the field after 20 years, almost 15 years ago, we were invited to join the team over there and five years ago I got to lead as executive director. There you go. Yeah. Well we're talking with um, Mike Schrage who is the executive director of Good News Productions International and uh, we are uh, figuring out how to spread the good news but spreading it in uh, ways that are very uh, you know unique to a particular situation and by a particular group of people. We're going to be coming right back uh, after this short break uh, so stick around and uh, don't go away. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.
Right, so communication, near and dear to my heart. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really do think it's one of those things, at least for all of us as Christians, you know, it's always the, the whole thing is how do we share with other people what we believe and how right. it works, okay? Uh, and, how, and why it works for us. Um, and if folks want to grab it, they can grab it. And if not, we'll just figure out another way of sharing it. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, maybe it'll work the next time. So you've gotten into this and you've got all kinds of, lots of good show and tell this morning. We got some good toys here <laughs> on the table uh, that, that kind of indicate some of the way that you all do your work. So what do you, what'd you bring here? Sure. What's all this stuff? Well, the first thing we've got here is just a, a mini iPad that's been docked into a uh, iographer, which is a plastic molded kit. And so what that'll let you do is go ahead and put on your microphone piece for audio purposes. Uh, there's a place to do interchangeable lenses. And then with just two $7 apps, you can download this and make it be a very robust HD full quality camera for doing your acquisition for your video. And then you can turn right around with either your finger or with a stylus, you can turn right around and do your own editing. So what we're finding out is that we can take this unit, which together with this and a tripod costs only $1,000. And we can take it to people who have like an eighth grade education in Africa, Central America, Asia, wherever, and they have a real desire to be a communications uh, expert and really help uh, use technology to propagate faith and propagate their love for Jesus Christ. And so we can train them with a tool that says, you can do this yourselves. We don't have to have people from America. And you can learn how to do in your own creation, your own ideation, your own production. And it doesn't take thousands of dollars of studio money. It doesn't right. take lots and lots of training. It's very user friendly. Yeah. So that's one. So that's how you get it produced. Well, a lot of places in the world, um, Father Jay, there's, there's not electricity yet. Right. We lived in one of those places. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Electricity, computers, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Where's all this so, stuff for? So my next little uh, show and tell gadget here, it looks just a little bit bigger than a cell phone. And so this piece here is uh, just a little what they call Pico projector. And so very lightweight. And so there's just a mini SD card on the side that I can put, depending on the size of the SD card, I can put gigabytes of video data on that place. So whatever they recorded out in the bush, out in the street, whatever it was, they can then move it and put it on that mini SD card and then go ahead with this little tripod here, this little thing, I think, those, I think the little tripods are really cute. Aren't they? They almost have a personality of themselves. They kind of do. You kind of have to name them, you know, or <laughs> something there. And so then you can turn it on and just show it there. It'll do a four by four uh, picture. It runs, the panel is solar powered. And so oh, wow. there's no electricity need in terms of if you can't access that with the mains. As long as you're kind of charged up, you're ready that's to right. go, and even if it's dark. That's right. Oh, well, that's the ideal Actually, time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it'll show better with, with exactly. low, low yeah. We We always low say energy. that you can use uh, the um, S-U-N to tell about the capital S-O-N. <laughs> and um, so it's this little Pico projector. And again, this unit's $1,000 just to get you in production size. But for distribution, here's another $1,000 with a little bitty kits. I haven't brought them up to the table here, but they're just weighing about, oh, a couple of pounds each. And so guys can put them on their backpack, they can put them on their bicycles, and really take the Jesus film or any production or something about social lift, whether it's agriculture, intensive farming, whatever it is, and bring it to the village and take the movies to the people. And that, I mean, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're then, if they don't get to see many movies especially, Oh my. They're riveted. It yeah. draws them. You, we really, honestly, we tell in some cases, don't announce this. Because if you do, you're going to have more crowd than the capacity of the audio and the video uh, to handle the crowds. And so what? It's a great way to help uh, local workers get their foot into the door to be accepted by the community. Um, it's just been wonderful. People, mm -hmm. Buddhist, uh, Muslim, Hindu communities have said, wow, the, the things you're teaching and you're taking it to our local people, please come back. Uh, and it's just a great conversation starter. In yeah. that regard. Well, you know, and again, isn't that the core <coughs> practice of, of evangelization? I mean, Jesus, I mean, uh, you know, for, for Christians anyway, I mean, Jesus went to get, get to know people. Yes. I mean, he didn't yep. just go and say, let me beat you over the head with my message. He got to know people. And once he got to know people, the relationship is what's supposed to change everybody's life. And so, I mean, that's, that's a, you know, it's a great thing. You're going, you're helping the community, you're forming the relationship, you're doing what you need to do. And at the same time, you know, when they'll say, well, why are you doing this? You'll say, okay, now I'll tell you about 
why I'm doing what mm -hmm. I'm doing. Now I'm mm -hmm. talking about who I believe in and why I'm after that too. Right. You know, which I think is always the secondary, you know, let me form the relationship first. I don't have to, you know, Absolutely. I mean, they're supposed to be looking at him when they look at me. I know that's a stretch, but they're supposed to be looking at, you know, him when they're looking at me or looking at you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the way it's supposed to work. And so they should be getting his message, even if I'm not mentioning his name uh, right away or, you know, beating somebody over the head with it, you know, as we go. Mm -hmm. but that, 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 at least that to me is the, is the way we, we engage and do what I would consider pre-evangelization anyway. Right. You know? Right. Then, uh, you know, if people, if you, we get the relationship, of course they're going to ask you why you do what you do and why you believe the way you believe. And then we're off and running. Then it's, yeah. then it's, then it's all fair game. You know, it's like, okay, you want to know? I'll tell you. Not a problem. Well, you, if you show that you care, whether it's with eye care, whether it's with agriculture and there's hunger involved, then you can say, now that my stomach has been ministered to, now that my body has been helped, now that my community has been blessed, I want to know what motivated you. What, what drives you to come 8,000 miles away? What drove you to, to follow God and to love Jesus the way mm -hmm. you do? Well, they see that love outpouring first. And so a lot of times these visual kinds of things can help amplify. We say that GMPI multiplies. It, it doesn't start or end the conversation, but it can yeah. sure be an accelerator to pour what we say a gasoline on the fire and help things go uh, further yeah. and a lot easier. And, and honestly, people can remember when you see, when I see something as I hear it, I can really walk away and remember more of the content than if I'm just having some words of speaking it. Well, we're tied in. It's get, it, we're tied in in more ways. You know, yeah. if I just hear something, it's one thing, but I hear it and see it, you know, then you add an activity that goes with it, then yeah. I'm, I've got it all kinds of different ways. Yeah depending on how I learn, depending on how I do my thing. So you've got these 800 folks, you said, mm -hmm. around the U.S.? 800 between... Just in the oh, U.S.? Yes, the, between the 200 and some churches and the 600 individual yeah. families. Yeah. So uh, they caught on to doing this just simply because they've seen the success, they've seen the, you know, uh, you know, the technique work. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that why they've jumped on board and why they support you? Yeah, they hear the, they hear the stories. You know, they hear uh, missionaries come back and say, wow, what Good News Productions has done in helping us have customized media materials has accelerated our work in XYZ country. Uh, now it's even the national people coming back because it's just so easy to travel and so forth. Nationals are coming back, an Indian uh, gentleman, an Asian brother, someone from uh, you know, Nigeria, wherever, is coming back and saying, oh my goodness, the things that we have from Good News Productions uh, is really helping. And so people catch it and they really like uh, that and saying, well, I can't go, but if I can help the message go through media, that just makes a lot of economic mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I assume, you know, if, if somebody is interested in, in being the 801st, mm -hmm. there you, you know, go. You, yeah. the, they, I'm sure that you, you can tell them how that would work. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, several ways. Uh, first would be you can get on our website, which is simply www.gnpi.org. GNPI is easier to say than Good, Good, Good News, News Productions, Productions International, International, but it works. Yeah, yeah. It works. Yeah. So, www.gnpi.org. Uh, and then our phone number is simply uh, locally here, just 417 782 zero zero six zero seven eight two zero zero six zero you got it and i'm glad uh, you had three zeros in there yeah. instead of three sixes okay. that's probably good zero I'll zero agree. six zero <laughs> zero okay well good so that if somebody wanted to like you know jump on board and provide a kit for a missionary you could make that happen absolutely and if okay. they wanted to come and help put them together there's volunteers that can help uh on our uh, campus, there's mailings that need to be done, there's uh, always maintenance things, there's these kits that can be assembled. Uh, so there's a host of ways that there's volunteer as well as financial help as well that can be helpful. Wonderful. Yeah. So what do you see next uh, for GNPI? Oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> um, apps, I got an app for that. Okay. Uh, I've got my phone here and um, there's just, we have a GNPI app by the way, uh, that you can just go to your local um, uh, app Store and download it, either as an Android or uh, Apple Store. Uh, but that will give you notifications of the ministry. And for any of you that out there that are grandparents or whatever, just ask your grandkids about that <laughs> GNPI. Tell, tell your grandkids the App Store or whatever, they're going to help you if you don't know what's going on. Yeah. And so, 
applications that are going on your phone and so what we did with the videos we can now put them on our phone and so now we're delivering while we're sleeping here I can deliver a three-minute Russian piece in video to somebody over in Russia that wanted to know something about Jesus in his own language and do it through say Uversion which is the most popular uh, Bible app these days we provide content in multiple languages to them and so he is a Russian uh, citizen has downloaded it and he's reading it and he wants more material well we're sleeping we're resting and so forth but we delivered that via the internet downloaded it straight put it in his pocket and it costs nobody anything and he can do it on his own time in his own language and even respond and chat back to uh, someone on the other end to do follow-up so it's very laser focused and it's very much about uh, the user being more uh, user friendly and also being user aware than what we said was broadcast where they had to say well it's television there's going to be a certain time it's going to be a certain station a certain topic right. but now I can be in charge of controlling the content so apps and the internet that's where it's at well it is where it's at and I think that most of us would agree that uh, if we are not trying to figure out how to engage the tools mm -hmm. of a new generation we're going to in some ways be left behind uh, because um, well St. Paul had to get on a boat and go travel from spot to spot. That's what they had. Yeah. Nowadays, uh, we, you know, rarely will we get on a boat and go somewhere, but we are going to get uh, on, uh, you know, uh, an app mm -hmm. and transfer those messages. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. Uh, thanks for joining us. Stick around. Mercy Doctor can take care of you at Mercy. Your life is our life's work. Quality, safety, and an exceptional patient experience. Mercy is grateful to be recognized as one of the top 15 health systems in the United States. At Mercy, your life is our life's work. Well, thanks again for joining us for another Sunday of Faith in Our Hometown. Um, my guest this morning has been Mike Schrage uh, from Good News Productions International. And we've been talking about how we do evangelization, how we spread the good news uh, about what we believe in this day and age. Uh, talking about how that's been done and, you know, kind of from right here in good old homegrown Joplin, uh, an idea grew up, people, you know, wanted to proclaim the news, went to different countries, figured out that it was more effective to let people figure out how to do that in their own language and with their own uh, way of pre presenting the message. That message has now continued to grow and continues to happen right out here uh, on North Main, if you will, uh, and continues to spread. So. Um, we all, I think, regardless of what we believe in, and for those of you that aren't Christian, when we believe in what we believe in, and we believe it's made a difference in our lives, we want to share that with other people. And uh, that's just one of the basic tenets of how we share faith as people uh, on this earth. When, when it's made a difference in our lives, we want to share it with other people. So uh, join us next week for Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, I hope you have a blessed week. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.